Here's to veterans from The Baby Snooks Show, starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks, with Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Carmen Dragon and his orchestra, and me, Harlow Wilcox. <laughs> The fast-moving quarter hour of entertainment and helpful information brought to you transcribed by the top flight talent of radio in cooperation with the Veterans Administration. Dedicated to the citizens who served in our armed forces, now working shoulder to shoulder with their fellow Americans to make a stronger and better America for us all. Before we join the Higgins at Sycamore Terrace, I'd like to tell you a true story about one of the world's great conquerors. In November 1944, he was paralyzed by a bullet from an enemy sniper. At the Veterans Administration, hospital doctors told this man exactly what he was up against. They explained what they'd do and what he would have to do. He said, okay, it's a deal. Slowly, painfully, he forced his body to obey his will. Trained healthy muscles to do useful work. Learned how to use braces. And now he's home in a house equipped with ramps to make travel easy for his wheelchair. He built his own typewriter desk, writes a weekly newspaper column, and he's now ready to enter college. Yes, this veteran is one of the world's mighty conquerors. He conquered himself. Helped every step of the way by the skill and know-how of the VA's top-notch doctors and nurses, this veteran, this conqueror, is fighting his way back, inch by inch, to useful and self-reliant citizenship. And that's the goal of the Veterans Administration. And now to Sycamore Terrace. Well, the Higgins home is in a more than usually hectic state as Mummy prepares for the arrival of Charles Harding Blair, the eminent author, lecturer, and traveler. Much to Daddy's disgust, he's going to be their house guest. Well, come along, Snooks. We'll try to make ourselves presentable for the great Charles Harding Blair. While you're at it, you might glance through those books on the table. Books? Yes, Mr. Blair's books. He wrote them. The very least you can do is glance through them so you'll have some basis for dinner table conversation. Oh, Vera, this is going too far. It is not. Hmm. Read me about China. Very well, I'll just read something at random. All right. Traveling in our little skiff down the Yangtze River, we suddenly came upon a large building. The reader will never guess what it was. Maybe it was a Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah, how funny. <laughs> do you mind if I continue reading? Please do. Very well. The reader will never guess what it was. Although Oolong, my number one boy, made a feeble pun about the building, saying it might be the Yankee Stadium. <laughs> All right. Africa the Mysterious, Mm -hmm. Chapter 3. Yes. Although it was pitch dark out, I suddenly called a halt as I instinctively realized we had reached the banks of the Niaza River. We struck camp early the following day and made our way down the Niaza to Ngagi in the Tata region. (laughs) What's the matter, Daddy? Nothing. That's what it says here. Oh, I thought your teeth were slipping. Now listen. The third day out, Greps, my number one boy, <laughs> cited the Ngagi escarpment. Mm, that must be him. Huh? Yes. Lancelot, look, it's Mr. Blair. Straighten up this room, hurry. Here's a comb, Lancelot. Comb your hair. What hair? Oh, dear, I'm sorry. How did I? Don't even know my own name. Well, it's not Richard. Open the door. <laughs> oh, yes. Be still, my heart. Mr. Blair, I take it. So nice to see you. Come in, won't you? You are Mrs. Higgins? Uh, Yes. And uh, who, pray, is this? This is my daughter. My advice to you, madam, is not to take her to Africa in the open season. (laughs) I've hunted things that look better than that. (laughs) Well, I know she's not pretty, but she's very bright. And well-mannered. And this? Uh, my husband, Mr. Higgins. Ah, 
nature, Mrs. Higgins, has indeed been unkind to you. So I like that. My luggage what? is outside, Mr. Higgins. Would you mind? Uh, Lancelot, bring Mr. Blair's luggage in. That's it, dear. <laughs> well, don't stand there, Lancelot. Hurry, Mr. Blair is tired and wants to change. Hurry, Lancelot. Just call me Oolong. So long, Oolong. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Mr. Blair, I brought you up some lunch. Thanks. It's good, because I take it and on the way up. Yeah, just, just set it on the table and leave. Mommy, fix you some boiled eggs. Come on, bake you a pie. A pie? A pie? What kind of pie? A mud pie. <laughs> well, take it away. Take it away. I'll have no mud pie, no mud pie at all. What are you staring at? What are you doing? I'm typewriting. That's what I'm staring at. Oh, please, child, run along. I have a lecture to deliver tomorrow, and I'm trying to finish it. I want to hear your lecture. No. <laughs> I want to hear your lecture. What's this thing over here? That is a beehive. A real one? No, it's a model I use in my lecture. Almost impossible to tell it from the real thing, isn't it? Yeah. I can almost feel those little bees in there. They're stinging me. <laughs> Even those little bees in there that are stinging you are perfect little models. Yeah. Now, careful, that's glass. You'll break it. No, I won't. Don't touch it. Mrs. Higgins. Mrs. Higgins. Uh, yes, I'm right here, Mr. Blair. Get this human barnacle of yours away from me. Oh, I'm sorry. Leave Mr. Blair alone, Snoop. And what were you doing prowling around outside my door? I just came up to tell you you're wanted on the telephone. Oh. Well, certainly took you long enough. I came as fast as I could. This is a pretty old make-believe bee house. Those little bees are so cute. I wonder if we'd miss it if I just took one. I'll take this one. Oh, I broke it. What'll I do? Oh, I know. There's another beehive out in the apple tree. I'll get it to him and he won't know the difference. <laughs> Love, what are you doing in that living room? I just finished cleaning it. It's all right, darling. I'm walking on my hands. Oh, Lancelot, isn't it thrilling? What? Charles Harding Blair has decided to stay another week with us. That's the best news I've had since I got my finger caught in the lawnmower. And guess what else, Lancelot? Mr. Blair is giving a preview of his lecture right in our home this afternoon. Stupendous. I'm having a luncheon for all the women in the ladies' auxiliary, and you can help. I've got news for you, Vera. I won't be here. I'm leaving the house. Exactly. That's how you can help. Oh. I want you to take Snooks and Rosebeer with you. What? Oh, now, Vera, I was going over to my club for a little relaxation. Lancelot, it's very seldom I ask you to take the children off my hands. But, Vera, it's a men's club. I was going to play some animal and take a steam. What'll I do with those kids? I don't care what you do with them. Just get them out of the house. Oh, man's castle. <laughs> When it comes to spending your money on life insurance, you have the last word. What kind and how much of it you carry is your business. However, when so many experts agree the National Service Life Insurance is such a good deal, the advice of the Veterans Administration seems more than reasonable. That advice is simply this. If you have dropped your GI insurance, get all the facts about it right now. After you have the whole story... You probably can get your GI insurance back if you want it. The surest way to get the full story about National Service Life Insurance is to ask the VA or the insurance men cooperating with the VA. Then you can decide what to do. Remember that a sound life insurance program is an asset to yourselves, your families, and your communities. It's the badge of responsible citizenship. No veteran can afford to plan a life insurance program without taking a careful look at National Service Life Insurance. It was provided especially for you and your comrades in uniform by Congress 
and a grateful nation. And now, back to the Higgins home in Sycamore Terrace. Mommy's luncheon is over. The ladies have settled down, and Mr. Charles Harding Blair is in the midst of his lecture on the life of the bee. Let me illustrate, ladies, by making reference to this model beehive here. Looks almost real, doesn't it? <laughs> it, uh, it has a hymn somewhere along here. Where is that thing? Be careful, Mr. Blair. There's a bee crawling on your hand. Now, now, now. Let's not let our imaginations run away with us. These are just imitation bees. They... Ah! Ah! Oh, 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 Well, I guess it's safe to go in now. I don't see any cars. The women must have gone home. <laughs> oh, Vera. Oh, why are you crying? What's the matter, Mommy? Don't you? What's the matter, Mommy? Me? You? you. Darling, what is it? What's happened? Last lot, Higgins. I protected that child many times when you wanted to give her a spanking. But now I want you to give her the licking of her life. Will somebody please tell me what's happened? My whole party ruined because that child broke Mr. Blair's model beehive and substituted a real one. It was awful. There were bees all over the place. Well, where's Blair? He left in a rage. He's not staying with us anymore. He's going to Mrs. Jackson. Well, Lancelot, don't stand there. Do something. Snooks. Goodbye, Daddy. Come here. <laughs> Leave the room, Vera. This is not going to be pretty. Not too hard, Lancelot. Just teach her a good lesson. I'll take care of it. Outside, Vera. This is man's work. <laughs> Call me when it's over. I'll be in the next room. <laughs> I didn't mean it. It fell down. Shh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Here's half a dollar. <laughs> half a dollar? Yeah. Now start bawling. But you didn't hit me yet. <laughs> I'm not going to. But I want your mother to think I am. Now go ahead. Yell loud as though I'm hitting you. Take this! <laughs> and this! <laughs> and this! I love you, little daddy. I love you too. And this! <laughs> and that's the Here's to Veterans tribute from the Baby Snooks Show, starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks with Hanley Stafford as Daddy. Arlene Harris, Alan Reed, the music of Carmen Dragon and his orchestra, and me, Harlow Wilcox. Who, with your sponsor, and the American Federation of Musicians, the American Federation of Radio Artists, the Advertising Council, and this station, have donated their services and time to the Veterans Administration as public service. Tune in again for another star-studded Here's to Veterans show. And remember, veterans... For advice and help with your insurance, education, loans, medical care, and other benefits, write or visit your nearest Veterans Administration office. Remember, a well-adjusted veteran means a happier and more prosperous America. And now a word from your local announcer. America's security is your security. Buy United States security bonds. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Wynn Elliott, your host for Guest Star, a transcribed feature program brought to you by United States security bonds and this station as a public service. For a secure home in a secure country... Invest now in United States security bonds. Like 80 million of your neighbors, become a stockholder in America. Our guest today is one who's been known to theater audiences since before the beginning of radio. Here she is in her famous characterization of Baby Snooks, assisted by Hanley Stafford as daddy, Miss Fanny Bryce. Tore adore, oh, tore adore. Snooks, we're going to have a great adventure in music this evening. I'm taking you to the opera. Nonsense. You love the opera. 
It's colorful and exciting. Well, I ain't excited. Well, listen to what you're going to hear. <laughs> Just listen. A toreador, oh, toreador. Well, does that convince you? Yeah. I want to go to the movie. <laughs> That's the attitude I'd expect from you. Don't you know why I'm taking you to the opera? Because <laughs> you got two free tickets. Oh, that'll do. Look, we're to the opera, and that's final. Now, go put on your best dress and find my top hat. But, Dad... There'll be no buts about it. I want to see you down here in ten minutes with your coat and my top hat. Can I wear my own hat? <laughs> Very funny. Run along. All right, Daddy. Poor Number, please. I want to speak to Alexander Bumstead. I beg your pardon. I want to ask him what he did with my daddy's top hat. I'm sorry. I'll connect you with information. All right. Information? Oh. Did you wish information? Yes. What did Alexander do with my daddy's top hat? <laughs> sorry. I do not have that information. Do you wish me to look up a party for you? Oh, I haven't got time to go to a party. Because <laughs> my daddy is taking me. To whom do you wish to speak? Alexander. Do you have his last name? It's Bumstead. And his address? I don't know his address, but his phone number is named 2695. <laughs> I'll connect you. Hello. Hello, Alexander. Hello, Snooks. What you doing? Nothing. You want to come over to my house and fight? <laughs> no, thanks. I got to go to the opera. What'd you call me up for? Do you remember that hat you wore when we got married? Yeah. Uh-huh. Your father's stovepipe. Well, I need it back. You getting married again? <laughs> no, my daddy wants it. You know where it is? Sure. It's on my snowman. What's left of it? Uh-oh. <laughs> I guess it ain't gonna do your father any good. I guess it ain't gonna do me any good either. Well, goodbye. Sorry you can't fly with me today, Snooks. Well, why don't you call up Gwendolyn? Maybe she's free. Nah, she can lick me. <laughs> Goodbye, Alexander. Goodbye. Oh, I love that boy. <laughs> Goodbye, well, Daddy. Come here, young lady. You might as well know right off that I heard the whole conversation. And I know all about what happened to my top hat. Shall I turn over, Daddy? No, this time I won't spank you. Do you feel all right? Of course I do. But I want to prove to you the value of telling the truth. Mm -hmm. You tell the truth, I don't spank you. Mm. This looks like a good time to tell you about the tickets. The opera tickets? Uh-huh. Rope Spear chewed up one of them. <laughs> Pitfalls. Pitfalls? Yeah. Whatever made him do that? He saw me chew up the other one. <laughs> Snooks, those were box seats you chewed up. Daddy, you're taking off your belt. You're going to spank me. You told the truth again. Can't we buy new tickets? Yes, but not in the same place. Bend over, Snooks. This is going to hurt me worse than it hurts you. Yes, but not in the same place. Thank you, baby Snooks and Daddy. Now, between the acts, here's Harry Sosnick and the Security Bonds Orchestra with a special Sosnick arrangement of Irving Berlin's Cheek to Cheek.
to Sycamore Terrace and the Opera House. Snooks and Daddy are making their way to the seats Daddy has been forced to buy with his own money. Eight and nine. Snooks, stop counting the steps. I'm not Daddy. I'm counting the balcony. Well, stop it. We've only got two more to go. Steps? No, balconies. Mm -hmm. I don't like the Opera Daddy. You haven't seen it yet. Then stop complaining. Opera happens to be one of the highest forms of art. Well, I don't like it. Well, why? It's too high. Well, that's too bad. The orchestra seats were too expensive. Why? Well, it's always that way. The lower seats are higher. <laughs> the lower seats are higher? Yes. And the higher seats are lower. <laughs> well, the lower you go, the higher you go, but the higher is low. You see, the lower the seats and the lower you go, the higher the seats. Imagine that. For instance, the orchestra is always higher than the balcony. Now, do you understand? Yeah. The orchestra sits on the roof. No. The audience sits in the orchestra. Where does the orchestra sit? Listen, Costello. Let's drop the whole thing. You know, dear, I've always had an affinity for fine music. Yeah. The last time I was at the opera, I was singing. Mm -hmm. I brought your mother here. Oh, what a beautiful memory. The opera? No, being single. <laughs> oh, come on, Snooks. The curtain's going up. This is where our seats are. I don't see our seats. Well, they're not reserved. You sit anywhere you want to. Anywhere I want to? Yes. Get off that lady's lap. But you said that... Never mind. Quiet. Oh, yeah, this will please. Oh, the opera's starting. <laughs> Look, uh, maybe we can get a couple of single seats. There's an empty one right there, in front. Oh, yes. And there's another empty one way up behind that post. Ah. Well, looks as if one of us is going to sit behind a post. I wonder which one. <laughs> no, you don't think I take advantage of you just because you're a child, do you? Well, do you? Don't I? <laughs> All right, I'll leave it up to you. Sit in whichever seat you want to. Sit right down here. On the other hand, Snooks, you have better eyes than I have. You have a longer neck than I. <laughs> For that remark, you can go sit behind the post. That's my daddy. Go ahead. I'll see you during the intermission. Why? Quiet. Here, yeah. next to oh. <laughs> uh, Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, thank heavens I'm rid of her. Now I can enjoy the opera in peace. Oh, no, not that. Yo-ho! I'll ignore her. Mr. Boo, I see you. Is that brat your daughter? No. Hmm, yes, I am. Will you please shut her up? You shut her up. You shut her up or I'll shut you up. Hey, and miss him, old lady. <laughs> Whatever it is, it can wait. down and sit on my lap. I'm sorry I brought you here in the first place. This is a wonderful opera, Daddy. What is it? It's Aida. Can't you hear? Don't you see that foreign setting? Yeah. The elephants will appear any minute. Hmm, there's one now. That's Signor Scalapini. <laughs> He's the man you're going to sing for later. Listen to that voice. Someday you might grow up to be just like him. Mm, that's good. Oh, you like the idea? Yeah, I always wanted it to be a fat man with a beard. <laughs> be quiet. Look, there's another elephant. That's the prima donna. They call her the canary of the West. Why? Well, she sings like a canary. She looks like a canary. She can do anything a canary can do. Can she stimulate a little blue egg? <laughs> Stop that. Who's that singer over there? That's an elephant. Keep quiet. <laughs> Why can't you sit still and listen to the opera? Shut up. You shut up. Permissible, please. 